Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking for this. And in reality, I guess it really was only a matter of time before we did it. Too powerful for Marvel movies, Oblivion. Now, here's the crazy thing about it. Here's, here's, <laughs> here's the thing about Oblivion. People really seem to make the concept of his character far more complicated than it needs to be, right? So I wanna talk about a handful of things here. I wanna talk about what are called abstract realms, right? Like cosmic realms, cosmic entities. So one of the things that was established in the early 90s in the Quasar comics is that when, when an event happens, like Infinity Gauntlet, like the Infinity Gauntlet story, or the events of like Hickman's Avengers, the new Avengers or whatever, whenever any event happens and the cosmic entities outside of the Celestials and Galactus appear to people, they're basically borrowed bodies. The cosmic entities are in and of themselves abstract concepts, meaning they don't actually have a physical form. So it's, it's like a thought in your head, right? Like if I say, think of what the weather was today, that concept doesn't have a physical form, right? It's not like it comes out of your brain and then talks to you. But the question is, what if it did? The way that works in Marvel Comics is through something called the Dimension of Manifestations. And that was established back in the old Quasar comics when Greg Capullo was drawing it and so on and so forth. But the idea idea is that you have what's called anthropomorpho and so whenever any event takes place that requires cosmic entities to appear to somebody then basically their non-existing forms travel directly to uh to the dimension of manifestations and then they in turn get a physical form and then they leave the dimension of manifestations and then they show up in the main marvel universe or something like that now that's the way it was for years and years and years and years and then avengers academy number seven happened and the way that took the, the reason why that matters is because in that story there was a fight between ant-man hank pym and Crusher Creel. There comes a point when Ant-Man grows astronomically large and takes uh, Crusher Creel with him and basically travels to a place that's called Overspace. And what this is, is basically the kind of a, the establishment of the idea that the cosmic entities actually do have physical forms and they reside inside that Overspace. It's basically where they come from. They all hang out there, I don't know, play video games, they play Mario Party all day long until something happens that needs their attention. Who knows what they do? But they basically all just kind of hang out there and then appear whenever they need to. Now, when it comes to the Overspace, that is something that's like outside the multiverse, right? So you have like, you know, this this huge multiversal space and then you have the overspace outside the multiverse, which is where the Living Tribunal resides. Every single universe has its own overspace, which is where the universe's individual cosmic entity resides, right? So like inside the overspace for the main Marvel universe is Eternity and Infinity and Mistress Death and those characters. So again, it's, it's, it's kind of strange, but then you have what's called the Outer Void. Now the Outer Void is more or less the same thing as like overspace, but it only has one occupant. And that one occupant is Oblivion. And the way this works is that Oblivion is the representation of the multiverse's destruction, essentially like the space between the multiverse's destruction and recreation, right? So like, say for example, that the multiverse is destroyed like it was during the events of Secret Wars, you know, I'm sorry, during the events of Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, and say it takes like 20 minutes for the multiverse to come back. That 20 minute gap is what Oblivion represents, the non-existence of anything. The way that, that Oblivion states it in Marvel Comics is that all existence came from him and all existence will return to him right now the issue with this is that it's stated by oblivion it's not like another source so it's basically oblivion kind of saying hey i am the origin of all things you have to believe me that's basically what it comes down to and so because of that you can't really take it as a credible source and so we can kind of go with it because that's what the comics say i mean until something else comes along that kind of contradicts that we just sort of have to roll with it but people always kind of relate oblivion to like mistress death how does oblivion relate to mistress death okay the notion behind this is that mistress death while she is kind of listed as like a sister of sorts or like really i guess during a discussion with herself and galactus she was kind of listed like she kind of said herself to be like a sister to oblivion she's not she's more like a daughter and the reason why is because oblivion again as the representation of the time it takes between the multiverse's destruction and its recreation he's a multiversal being right like he's like the living tribunal he's a multi Universal concept. There's only one of him throughout the entire multiverse, but every single universe has its own version of Mistress Death. And so the question becomes, if every universe has its own version of Mistress Death, is there a multiversal version of Mistress Death? Yes. That's Oblivion. That's the nature of it. That all the versions of death as they exist in Marvel Comics hail directly from Oblivion. And the reason why is, is, is for, mo for the most part, it's a new concept. The reason why it's new is because back in the day, it was kind of this, this notion that like Oblivion could only really have some measure of impact on those individuals who died due to 
being wiped from existence basically. But it was later expanded and kind of brought in that Oblivion has domain over all individuals who die, all beings who die. And so because of this, it's really possible for Oblivion to kind of like take a person who died and then bring them to his realm if he chose to. But Mistress Death also has her own afterlife. So again, it gets kind of hairy and it gets kind of crazy. The long and short behind this is that Oblivion is a multiversal concept and that I would go as far as to say that like every version of Mistress Death that exists throughout the throughout the, the multiverse is a version of him. It's basically like a kind of a, a portion of himself split across the various universes. Now, why does this make Oblivion too powerful for the Marvel movies? Well, because Oblivion's insane. I mean, it's, it's basically saying like, what if God was evil? There was a story that Marvel Comics wrote called the Chaos War. And this was basically like the introduction of Amatsu Mikabashi, right? Like this guy went on a war path across like the, the universe, right? Like killing all, like, like the Olympians were basically pushed to like the near brink of extinction. Like almost every single God that the Chaos King fought, he killed. It was insane how powerful he was. He had like this astronomical army of forces and so on and so forth. But despite the fact that the godly pantheon of the Marvel Universe was almost pushed to the total brink of extinction, like Chaos King himself, by the story that we saw, is basically an aspect of Oblivion and possesses like a fraction of Oblivion's power. And so if someone with a fraction of Oblivion's power was able to almost lay waste in its entirety the entire pantheon of gods and cosmic entities as they exist in Marvel Comics in a singular universe, what hope does anybody have against him? This isn't like the Molecule Man Owen Reese, right? Where it's a guy who's not really evil and he's easily manipulated and has no real confidence in himself. It's not someone like Mad Jim Jaspers who requires a reality to warp and that if he's taken to a, a space where there is no universe, it's just a giant white void, he's basically a human and can be shot with a bullet and killed. You're talking about this omniversal, omnipresent, almost omnipotent, near, dis, near indestructible being that, depending on how you look at it, could be considered an equal to the living tribunal and second to the one above all outside of the Beyonders and so on. It's not something you can really defeat. But you take a character like that and you throw him into the MCU and no one would really be able to stand against him as he exists in the current form. The only the only way you could really destroy someone like Oblivion is if you had a pre-retcon Molecule Man, basically the Molecule Man when he was at his absolute peak in power, when he was really as powerful as he'd ever been, you would have to have, to have somebody like the Beyonders who were wiping out all the cosmic entities across the cosmos. Protégé could definitely do it. The original Doctor Strange who had no limit to his power, he was infinitely powerful. You could count six people, maybe, who would stand a chance against that, but none of them exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's weird that people ask this because it's like, what would happen if a being so astronomically powerful that some of the most powerful beings in Marvel Comics could have no conceivable hope of defeating him? Like, what would happen if he showed up in the MCU? Like, it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, like, okay, so people, so somebody like the Fulcrum could probably defeat him, but even then, like, the Fulcrum is a universal entity, and, and some, some argue it's an aspect of the one above all, until it's explicitly stated there's no reason to believe that it is. It's weird. It's, it's just, it's weird and funky and crazy, and it's an ast astronomically powerful being. I mean, I don't really know how you make a case where the heroes could win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. It's not like you get World Breaker Hulk, right? Like, well, we get World Breaker, World Breaker Hulk or like Rune King Thor. No, not a chance. Like, I mean, no, no, no one you mentioned could do it. Like outside of like five or six people, no one you could think of could destroy Oblivion because he's just so astronomically powerful. It's crazy. I don't know how else to stress this. <laughs> I don't know how else to stress this point. It's just too astronomically powerful for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's just not, it's never going to work. I mean, like I said, he's a multiversal being. If it was universal, well, then just get the Infinity Gauntlet and you're done. I mean, that, that's that's all it would take, right? If it's like too powerful for Marvel movies, eternity. No, he's not either. Just get the Infinity Gauntlet and eternity is defeated. We've seen that play out. With a multiversal being, that's really what shifts things in Marvel Comics. When you leave the realm of a being that's powerful throughout the entire universe, and then you expand that into a being who's like multiversal powerful, then you're talking about a crazy level. Uh, you're talking about almost unbeatable. I mean, Jim Jaspers might be able to do it with the Jaspers warp, but the problem is the Jaspers warp takes time. By the time Jim Jaspers thought about the idea of initiating the Jaspers warp, he'd be wiped out of existence by oblivion. And that would just, that, that would be it. So there are other dimensional beings that might be able to do it, but they're only universal. Like Dormammu's really powerful, but he's really powerful on a universal level. He's not multiversal, right? Like Sidorak is not multiversal. He's universal. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it would be nuts. It'd be interesting. It'd be it'd be kind of curious. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the description or down in the comment section about what you guys think. Because again, this is a weird kind of choice to go with. I mean, it's an astronomically powerful multiversal being who's could only be defeated by like maybe five people. You know, I mean, the co other cosmic entities, you know, that are equivalent to him could. But like, aside from that, probably not. That's one of the weird things. Because like, I was I remember what was it? Somebody directed me to the to the Marvel Wiki 
on Oblivion. And it was like, he can be defeated by like his brothers and sisters, like Eternity and Infinity and Mistress Death. And it's like, no, he can't either because like they're only universal. They're not multiversal beings. So don't believe everything you read on Marvel Wikis, guys. Always go with the comic book source. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.